Although they aren't with us anymore, these chefs will forever be remembered for their remarkable runs on Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, today we're talking about contestants who sadly passed away, and the news of this contestant's death came as a shock. I was really torn up when I heard about how Tom passed away on July 1st of this year. Now, before I get into that, let's start by sending my thoughts and sympathy to all of Tom's family, friends, and loved ones. There's no denying that Tom truly made Season 2 memorable. Not least of which, how strong-willed he was during the signature dish challenge, where he was the sixth in line for Ramsay to judge his dish. As Ramsay lifted the cloche that was covering it, you could tell that he was a bit nervous. Tom even admitted that he was sweating, and even got a little bit of self-deprecating humor in. I sweat. I sweat all the time. I'm a schmetzer. Don't worry about that. The dude really knew how to make light of any moment. He had prepared shrimp scampi with a little twist, and I'm sure nobody expected it to be a cooked Caesar salad. Obviously, Chef Ramsay was appalled by the concept. First time in my entire life, I've been served a cooked Caesar salad. But this is the moment where Tom really impressed everyone. Despite Chef Ramsay's strong reaction, unlike the other contestants who were never receptive to criticism, Tom neither talked back nor got defensive. I'm a man, I can take it. If he didn't care, he wouldn't break my chops. He simply said that he could handle the criticism and he wasn't going to give Chef Ramsay a hard time about it. And that is exactly what Chef Ramsay expects from his chefs. With that statement right there, Tom showed the world that he had thick skin and was ready to learn from the experience. However, I didn't like the way he was treated in the third episode. During the relay challenge, Tom took the initiative to be the first on his team, and he was responsible for receiving information about the three dishes they needed to prepare, being chicken, tortellini, and salmon. Somehow, Tom found pre-made tortellini, but when Chef Ramsay noticed, he called him out and reminded him that there were ingredients available to make fresh ones. Tom not only acknowledged this, but also effectively communicated all the necessary information to Giacomo, ensuring that the team made some progress. At the end of the challenge, Tom felt really confident because his team had successfully completed two out of the three dishes. However, when Ramsay started giving critiques, things took a turn for the worse. Chef Ramsay, in a shocking and completely inappropriate move, resorted to fat shaming Tom. Do I slouch and slub and talk like this, like some big fat fucking slob? But I really didn't find that funny at all. And what's more, Tom's reaction was justified. He attempted to interject because he wanted to voice his thoughts, but Chef Ramsay's derogatory comment took it to a whole different level. But Tom wasn't willing to back down this time. Yeah, he decided to push back and defend himself, rightfully so. Who do you think you're talking to? He doesn't want to get a street fight with me, trust me. Sometimes we end up forgetting that these are thinking, feeling human beings, not actors. By the way, yeah, I know, they're also human too, but I figured I'd make the distinction here. And also, there's a shit ton of editing that goes into making someone appear the way they do on the show. Turns out, contestants are poked and prodded to give certain reactions in their confessionals. But Chef Ramsay is in a cult with Chef Ramsay being the all-knowing, infallible leader or something. So maybe sometimes I can stop treating him like one and agree that there have been times where he's definitely crossed the line. I came across this post where Grub Street called Chef Ramsay off-putting. And this may still be the nicest thing they said about him. Listen to this. The kind of negative press the chef seems to actively seek, it gives him fuel to continue to build his empire of television shows, cookbooks, and overpriced restaurants. Grub Street doesn't begrudge Ramsay for being successful, but his success comes at the expense of manners and taste. Among the laundry list of allegations against him, the article also called him out for fat-shaming Hell's Kitchen contestants. In my humble opinion, Chef Ramsay seems to have grown and mellowed out as he's grown older and become a dad. But yeah, there's no denying that in the past, he could be pretty tough on people when it came to their looks, height, and weight. Missy, Missy, come here you fat mouth little stupid bitch. Now, let's be honest, these criticisms have nothing to do with their actual skill in the kitchen. Coming back to Tom, his obituary reads, Thomas Henry Pauly, age 60, passed away on Saturday, July 1st, 2023, at his home in Lakewood. Born in Englewood, New Jersey, Thomas was raised in Harrington Park and has resided in Lakewood for the last two years. Also, did you know that Tom worked on Wall Street for many years before following his true passion for cooking? Yeah, turns out he attended the French Culinary Institute in New York in 2004 to 2006 before venturing out to different restaurants. What's more, apart from being a great chef, Tom was an avid golfer and a huge New York Yankees and New York Giants fan. Rest easy, man. Up next, when asked about his future plans, this next contestant said, I've never been one of those kinds who has an ultimate goal. I kind of just go with the flow. 
Some people have the desire to get to one point, my path chose me, so in that respect, you never know what's coming down the pike. I might find something else later on in life. Any knowledge is good knowledge, so I'll take it all. I mean, the man I was at 25 isn't the man I was at 30. You know what's coming, as far as I know now, I'm loving it. Well, these were the words of the late great season 16 contestant, Polly Giganti. On April 20th, 2017, Polly was found dead in his home in Philadelphia, as reported by Philly.com. He was only 36 years old. According to James Garrow, a spokesperson for the Philadelphia Department of Public Health, Polly's passing was the result of accidental drug intoxication. Sadly, the restaurant industry has become extraordinarily fertile ground for the abuse of illicit substances like alcohol, prescription opioids, cocaine, and marijuana. But the most pernicious of them all, according to the experts, is fentanyl. It's said that people who come from unstable family backgrounds, have experienced inconsistent parenting, or grew up in a less than functional home can still climb the ladder and earn a decent living. However, it's really common that they often carry their past experiences with them. Addiction is less about your external environment and more about what's happening inside your mind and body. And the restaurant industry can fuel these issues due to the ready availability of substances, demanding hours, culture of abuse, low wages, and high expectations. Polly grew up poor and only worked in restaurants to survive. And guess what? He never even wanted to become a chef. I never went to school for cooking. I was gonna be an engineer. I was basically doing it as a measuring stick on myself. I didn't care about any preconceived fears and notions. I just wanted to see how I could cook against other trained chefs. And boy, he was pretty impressive. Man, he not only taught himself the art of cooking, but managed to reach the impressive fourth place in the competition. That was just behind Heidi Parent, the runner-up Heather Williams, and the winner Kimberly Ann Ryan. His journey on the show kicked off with a remarkable start, and he made quite the impression on Chef Ramsay. During the signature dish challenge, Polly showcases culinary talent by presenting biscotti crusted scallops over crispy polenta with a basil curry cream sauce. It's a five, congratulations. I am ecstatic, thank the lord. His dish earned him the distinction of being the first male contestant to ever achieve a perfect score of five in the new format of this challenge, and that's no small feat. At the time of his passing, Polly was running the restaurant Bira in Philly and his journey on the show is a testament to the power of determination and self-learning. You will be missed, Polly. But what happened to this next contestant from season 12 who was dealing with cirrhosis, a liver condition, and also a chronic inflammatory bowel disease is a real shame. I'm of course talking about contestant Jessica Vogel, who suffered from some major health concerns and, to make things worse, also fell prey to substance abuse. Although she was believed to be in rehab, it came too little, too late. Her fiancé, John Kayser, shared the heartbreaking news of her passing on July 30th, 2018. The poor woman was only 34. Despite her ongoing treatment for colitis, her heart ultimately just stopped beating, as Kayser explained. Dan Ryan, a fellow contestant from season 11, said, I have no words. I'll miss her greatly. All HK contestants are family to us, alumni. After the news of her death broke out, more comments started pouring in from the Hell's Kitchen family. Rest in peace to a friend and sister through the birth of fire, tweeted season 12 contestant Gabriel. Though Jessica was being treated for colitis at the time of her death, the chef seemed to acknowledge that she had a drinking problem, as pointed out in a media.com post from October 2017. It has since been deleted though. She wrote, When my sister says start a blog, the narcissistic alcoholic in me thinks me and I. I'm fucked up. Truly, sure, I was on Hell's Kitchen with Jeff Ramsey and Cutthroat Kitchen on Food Network. I went to culinary school in Denver, grew up at the Jersey Shore, was raised by Mormon nannies in a mansion, dated a coastie, and had a stint of living near strippers in St. Pete, Florida. I'm weeks away from being 34 years old and got told I drink too much and have cirrhosis. Did it stop me from pouring shots of alcohol? No. Did my lifestyle of sex, drugs, and foie gras come to a born-again Christian revelation? Fuck that noise. I don't know if you want to have an adventure tale, but I'm here and ready to tell. My name is Jess, and I've lived to tell about it. To be continued. Those last three words are genuinely bone-chilling. It really shows you how fragile our lives are. Rest easy, Jessica. You were gone way too soon. Now, I want to take a quick break from this pretty heavy topic for a sec to make this known. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction or mental health issues, know that help is actually available. 
Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. Feel free to share this video with a friend and tell them that you love them and appreciate them today. Speaking of seeking help, I think Gennaro Delilo had a tough run in Hell's Kitchen. It started with his duck breast dish during the signature dish challenge, which didn't impress Ramsey to say the very least. Gennaro, that completely ducked up this dish. Things didn't improve much for Gennaro as the competition continued though. During a service challenge, he and Matt Hearn made errors with the sea bass, one was overcooked and the other was undercooked. While Gennaro was considered for elimination by his team during their deliberation, he managed to avoid being nominated and stayed a bit longer. In the second episode of season 16, the men's team faced a rough service that led Chef Ramsay to kick them out of the kitchen and let the women take over. Bridget, get out! Get out! It was the second time in a row that the men had to be shown the door, and this time, Gennaro had his share of responsibility for sending up raw New York strip steaks not once, but twice. Look, it's raw, it's white. I'm, I'm talking to you. Yes, would you like another chef? What, what the f do you think? Ultimately, Gennaro found himself on the chopping block, nominated for elimination alongside Aaron Smock. Chef Ramsay selected Gennaro due to his struggles in the kitchen and a perceived lack of passion. Despite the challenges and setbacks, Gennaro held on to his belief in himself, stating, I have a lot of passion and fight in me, say that my teammates didn't see that. I know I'm a good cook. My fiance knows I'm a great chef. I'm a winner in my eyes. And I agree. Nobody else, certainly not a reality TV competition, should decide your worth but you. And certainly not Johnny. You're embarrassing me in front of one of my heroes. Well, I apologize for that. No, but for real, how overplayed was his reaction? So damn forced. And it came after Gennaro very rationally said, Like, I'm not happy with what happened. Yeah, I f up, man, but I'm not gonna let you guys put me down about it. He admitted his mistakes, didn't he? So what was he supposed to do? Throw punches in the air or scream and shout like the rest of them? You have to agree, Gennaro handled every situation with so much grace and poise. Rest in peace, brother. Moving on, when season 12 contestant Sandra Flores opened up about her post-HK journey, nothing prepared us for the devastating tragedy that followed. Listen to this. She wrote, In 2014, I dominated the airwaves of season 12 on Hell's Kitchen with Chef Gordon Ramsay, right up until the finale. Upon my return home from wrapping up filming the show two months later, I wasn't feeling right. Was not myself. I was running about six miles a day and in the top condition of my life, but had severe fatigue. I felt as if all my energy was being sucked away to some unknown place and just wouldn't stop. Upon my insistence to doctors that something was wrong with me, my life came to a screeching halt. I got diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. I felt like my life was over and I could die. She continued, two months later, I had a double mastectomy. The 9 centimeter tumor that plagued me and 30 of my lymph nodes was removed. I've suffered chemotherapy from hell. My good doctors at Memorial Sloan Kettering have brought me to the edge of death trying to kill my cancer with treatment to the point where I lack the strength to walk. I've endured 25 rounds of radiation and lost another one of my trademarks besides my double Ds. I also lost my pride and joy, my long golden hair, but not my will to live. Luckily, I got to donate it where two wigs could be made for little girls who have lost all their hair to cancer treatment. She concluded by saying, I still dream of having my own show and opening up restaurants all over every major city where I can create art with my love for food and abuse my staff as I see fit. This is my story and I will continue to be the author of it. Pretty inspiring stuff, huh? But sadly, this is where the story doesn't end well. On January 22nd, 2022, she passed away. Man, that's really tough to say, but you'll always be remembered, Sandra. But this next contestant did something shocking. Season 2's contestant Rachel Brown reportedly took her own life after appearing on Hell's Kitchen. She was only 41. Her death made headlines and brought about the question of whether or not the reality show and Chef Ramsay's treatment of the contestants were to blame. The accusations were getting really heated because she wasn't the only Gordon Ramsay reality show contestant to come to the same end. Remember the restaurant which was featured on Kitchen Nightmares Campania's owner, Joseph Sorniglia? Your business is about to swim down the Hudson. If you're out of the loop, you need to watch this video I made about it. Anyway, writer and editor Cynthia Dermondi wrote in her blog, To me, this is a story about people who are so desperately searching for a handle on their lives, so they throw all of their hopes into a television show to fix it. If this isn't a part of what's so wrong about today's culture, I don't know what is. Gordon Ramsay had no comment on these deaths, but why would he? 
There's simply a sad coincidence that points to troubles way beyond the scope of any harsh words he could launch at them and nothing more. Damn, that's really harsh. But I guess she does have a point. What are your thoughts? The former president of the American Academy of Suicidology, Dr. Robert Ufit, shares some insights saying that she might have had a very bevy problem before appearing on the show. He continued, I would almost bet that the show itself should not be held responsible. I would say that the show might have tripped off something else that was going on in their lives. It is quite the possibility. Not just psychologically, the show may also complicate existing medical problems like Aaron Song and his diabetic conditions. Nevertheless, they are loved and will deeply be missed. And hey, I'm sure they're cooking up a storm in heaven's kitchen, right? So which of these contestants live on in your hearts even after all these years? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to make sure that everyone I've talked about and more are remembered. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. But before you check out, make sure you check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.